Let's have a look at part two then. So we've got the integration of x sine x with respect to x. What are we going to let u equal? Sine x is Why would we not let u equal sine of x? I mean, did you try it? No. Okay. Usually, if you're not sure, just try one. Okay. So if you're not sure what to let u equal, just try one. Then in the next step, it will become clear. Because you've got to remember, when I end up integrating it, uh, when I end up using the biparts formula, there's another integral over here. Mm -hmm. You want that integral to be easier than the integral you start with. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually, if you let it equal the wrong one, it will come out as a harder integral. Oh, okay. okay. So if that happens, usually just go back and swap these over. So let's do it this way. So u equal x. What's du equal? 1, cool. Uh, which means that dv has to be equal to sine of x. Now I've just rubbed it off the board. So what was v be equal to? Good, negative cosine of x. Right, so let's go through this then. So we're basically saying the integral of x sine x with respect to x has got to be equal to, well, it's going to be u times v. So it's going to be negative x cos x minus the integral of v du. So it's going to be minus negative cos x times 1, which is going to become plus the integral of cos x with respect to x. Okay? So this is what I mean earlier. right? If you let it equal the wrong thing, this integral on the right-hand side, in other words, the integral in the biparts formula, will usually come out harder than the thing which you started with. If that happens, just go back and swap over your u's and dv's. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. Right, so let's do this. So we get negative x cos x plus, what's the integral of cos x? Sine x plus c. There you go. You all get that? Mm -hmm. Cool, excellent. So that's part two. Let's have a look at part three. So part three is the integral of e to the x times by 1 minus e to the x to the power of 3 with respect to x. Now, I put this one in there to kind of throw you off a little bit, okay? Because ordinarily, ordinarily, you'd say, hmm. This is the integration of two functions. They don't look like particularly nice functions, particularly this thing here. Okay? So surely you're thinking, well, I have to use by parts here. Do you, though? No. You don't. You don't. Okay? And here is why. Here is why. Remember, remember, if I say that this is my awkward function, the 1 minus e to the power of x, in other words, a function buried within it, do you notice that the thing you're multiplying by is a version of that derivative? It's a version of that derivative. In other words, if I differentiate 1 minus e to the power of x, what do I get? Negative e to the power of x, which is something close to that. Now, if that condition holds, in other words, if the integral of this function, sorry, the derivative of this function looks something like your thing you're multiplying by, then by, part, then by substitution will probably work better. Substitution will work better. Okay? So actually, in this case, you should have used substitution. So you let u equal 1 minus e to the power of x, which means that du by dx has got to be equal to negative e to the power of x, which means that dx has got to be equal to 1 over, or negative 1 over, e to the power of x with respect to u. Okay? Then you can just stick it in. So you end up with the integral of e to the x. That thing is now u, so it's u cubed. Then dx has now become this thing. So it's negative 1 over e to the power of x with respect to u. Okay? Then you end up getting your e to the x is cancelling. This becomes nice and easy then. It's the negative integral of u to the power 3 with respect to u, which of course is somebody. Okay, and then of course if I just make my substitution back for u, this is going to be negative 1 minus e to the power of x, or raised to the power 4, divided by 4, plus c. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah, so don't just automatically assume because you have the product of two functions, you need to use integration by parts. It's not always the case. Okay, let's have a look. Um, integral of x plus 1 times by e to the power of x with respect to x. Okay? Now, actually, in this case, in this case, you could just go du, dx, okay, sorry, u and dv, okay, and use integration by parts. Um, it might be, it might be slightly easier for you if you wanted to say that you multiply this out. So you get x times by e to the power of x plus e to the power of x. Yeah? Doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, shall we just do, let's just do it. Let's just do it as it is. So in other words, let u equal x plus 1 and let dv 
equal e to the power of x. Well, okay, if dv equals e to the power of x, what's v going to be equal to? Good. And if u equals that, what's du going to be equal to? Cool, just the one. Okay, just one. Is that okay with everyone? Right. And again, if you got it the wrong way round, then it should have become pretty obvious in the next step that it became uh, harder. Okay. Let's have a look. So we get the integral of this thing. Okay, that's got to be equal to u times v. So it's going to be x plus 1 times by e to the power of x minus the integral of v du. So it's got to be integral of e to the power of x. Okay. Well, the integral of e to the power of x is somebody... So you get that, okay? Um, can we make any substitutions? I think we can. Have a look. We get x e to the power of x plus e to the power of x minus e to the power of x plus c. Happy with that? Just expand that bracket out, okay? E to the power of x is effectively cancelled, so you just end up with x e to the power of x plus c.